If you guys love Bad Day HQ, don't forget to check out Good Day HQ, available at youtube.com slash gooddayhq. It features the best in reality television, travel shows, and just general fun stuff to bring a smile to your day. In the Southwest Pacific Ocean, north of Malaysia and Indonesia, is the Republic of the Philippines. It is made of more than 7,000 islands, some so small they remain nameless. One of the largest and most important is Luzon in the north, home to Manila, the nation's capital. The island also produces most of the country's major crops, including rice, corn, and tobacco. Some of the most fertile soil in the country can be found on an island in the middle of Lake Taal, some 60 kilometers southeast of Manila. On September 28, 1965, harvest is in full swing. Like many young people on the island, 20-year-old Angelita Abellino helps her family with the September rice harvest. We started our harvest early in the morning. We rested during high noon. Then we went back to finish the harvest throughout the rest of the day. Then we rested when night fell. Apollinario de Ocampo also helps his parents, Luis and Felipa, on the family farm, as well as working the rich fishing grounds of Lake Taal. After waking up in the morning, I took care of the ducks and the cow. Then I went fishing. That was my job on the island. Then I'd take my cattle. We'd go to the rice field and till the soil and take care of the plants. Ruperto de Leon's large family provides all the help he needs to work the fields on his small farm. The eldest did the laundry. Her name was Feli. Then I had six boys. They were my helpers on the farm. For Bernabella Montenegro, this is her favorite time of year. She still toils side by side with tenants who live and work on the farm she owns on the south side of the island. Despite the hard work, harvest is traditionally a time of celebration for landowners and tenant farmers alike. Residents host fiestas to thank their patron saints for another successful year, and a safe one too, especially since they live on one of the most dangerous islands in the Pacific. It is known as Volcano Island, named for its most famous or perhaps most infamous resident, an unusual volcanic formation known as Mount Taal. Covering an area of 23 square kilometers, Taal is one of the lowest volcanoes in the world, just over 300 meters above sea level. But that is not the only feature that makes it unique. It's a very interesting geological uh, phenomenon. A volcanic island, Luzon, uh, holds the Volcano Crater Lake, which is Lake Taal, which holds Volcano Island, which has its own volcano lake, which has a small island inside. Uh, at the center of Taal Volcano Island is we have the main, with the a crater lake. Uh, at least uh, the largest or the biggest crater within the Volcano Island. And actually, the main crater lake is the site of uh, some of the most uh, catastrophic or hazardous eruptions of Taal Volcano. Taal's smaller size makes it no less violent or dangerous. Since the Spanish first settled the area in the late 16th century, Taal has had over 30 major eruptions. In 1952, the Philippines Institute of Volcanology and Seismology establishes a watch station on the island's western shore. In the early 50s, there were reports of uh, some hydrothermal activity observed at uh, Taal Volcano. 
and the functions of the office was to monitor and study volcanoes. By late September 1965, there are 6,000 people living on Volcano Island. For several days, residents have seen smoke billowing from Mount Taal and have heard the volcano growling from within. But for most, it is nothing new and little cause for concern. They don't know that the monster inside the mountain is about to be unleashed once again. And many of those who call Volcano Island home won't live to see its next sunrise. September 28th, 1965. In the middle of Lake Taal in the Philippines, communities all over Volcano Island are celebrating a successful fall harvest. Residents, including Angelita Abellino and her family, join in the fiesta, sharing food and drink with neighbors and friends. Dancing is also part of the festivities, particularly for young people like Apolinario de Ocampo and twin brothers Raquel and Raul Carangal. High school student Nap Arceo knows the Carangals very well. Raquel and Raul's father is a relative who arranged for him to attend private school in his community on the south side of the island. And then in 65, I'm only a, a second year high school. I'm staying with my uncle and my parents. Was a, yeah, they are living in other town in Kalisay. By 2 a.m. September 29th, the celebrations are all but over. Most islanders, including farmer Ruperto de Leon and his family, are in bed, resting up for another day in the fields. So is Bernabella Montenegro on her farm on Volcano Island's south side. But one resident is about to reawaken, the volcanic mountain known as Mount Taal. The eruption of 1965 began on 29 September, about 2 a.m., a combination of both sort of a geyser-like steam and water and molten lava. We were in bed already, sleeping. We were right beside the ocean, and then just right above us, there was an explosion. It was really close to our hut, about two kilometers. Fishermen saw some fire coming out of the volcano, and they warned us of the danger. We knew that the volcano would be erupting soon, so we prepared ourselves to get away from the volcano. There was an earthquake in the beginning, then it spit out fire, lots of fire. Elsewhere on the island, Francisco Montenegro wakens to the sound of the explosion. I was surprised to see that there was a bill of smoke coming from the volcano island and the sky was littered with bright lights, maybe burning coal and everything that could be compared to a fiesta celebration. At the Volcano Observation Station, the official on watch can see that this is no fiesta. He also understands that there is no time to lose. When he looked at the crater of the volcano, he was surprised that the, the volcano is uh, erupting. So what he did is to wake up his neighbors and tell them to uh, leave the island uh, as soon as possible. But because uh, the eruption happened at the southwest side of the volcano, it affected only the southern half of, of the island. On the south side of the island, Nap Arceo realizes that he and his uncle are in grave danger. I'm staying with my uncle. I'm the one to tell him that we have to go it's because Cajo de Volcano is erupting. Also on the south side, Francisco Montenegro's mother, Bernabella, takes refuge with neighbors in a nearby building. 
but it offers them little protection. The eruption is phreatic, or steam blasted, a violent explosion that catapults huge columns of dust, ash, and cinders to a height of more than half a kilometer. Like many structures on the island, the home of Angelita Abellino and her family instantly becomes a potential death trap. After the house fell, we were on our backs, crawling out, and the mud was so heavy on our bodies. The roof fell on my father, but there was this barrel that collected water about this high that prevented the house from rolling over us. On Volcano Island, family members search frantically for their own, lost in the thick smoke and ash. Others seek refuge on the north side of the island. We had to evacuate from this place to go to a higher place. And what we did, we packed our belongings, then we walked to, up to be evacuated to Taal. Just run, walk, and then until we reached the, the public market in Taal. Apolinario de Ocampo also makes it safely to Taal village. But like many islanders, Roberto de Leon and his family look to Lake Taal as an avenue of escape. However, traveling southwest away from the volcano puts many directly in harm's way. Mud was coming down from the mountains, and there was ashes flying everywhere. It hurt when it rained down on you. Most of the fatalities actually were caught when they were escaping because the shortest route that they know is uh, towards the southwest, and, and, and that is where most of the ejected volcanic materials are falling. Some of them were hit by uh, boulders and volcanic bombs. Upon reaching the shore of Lake Taal, 12-year-old Raquel Caringal climbs into an escaping motorboat. His twin brother, Raul, is not so lucky. He is in a much slower boat, powered by hand. He said that hot ashes and rocks were falling from the sky. Then there was this big wave, and he was thrown out of the boat. Farmers' fields, once so fertile, now lie buried under layers of hard-caked mud and ash. Homes and the families that once lived there are destroyed, and the search for lost loved ones must begin. September 1965. On Volcano Island in the Philippines, Mount Taal continues to spew smoke, ash, and debris for days after the first eruption on September 29th. Many of those who escape spend those days in communities unaffected by the eruption on the north side of the volcano. Others set out in search of their loved ones, still holding on to the slim hope that they will find them alive. One of these people is Francisco Montenegro, who searches for his mother, Bernabella. We crossed the mountain and we reached the place where my mother is supposed to be. I was surprised to see it was littered with dead bodies, young and old. I hope mother is not one of them. We tried to inspect every female cadaver and found that mother was, is not there. We come always over the area. Luckily, when we reached the mountainside, there was a mambo group. He told me, your mother is one of those who was buried when the roofing of the stairways collapsed. With the help of other volunteers, Francisco is able to move the collapsed roof on the site where his mother was last seen alive. She was there, mostly buried. It was only her shoulders that were exposed. So with our bare hands and with the aid of a little coconut shell, we scrapped the, the mud and threw them away. 
but there is little time for grief. Finding blankets in a nearby house, Francisco fashions a sling in which to carry his mother home for burial. By the 1st of October, volcanic activity on the island begins to decline. As Red Cross and government agencies move in to support survivors with food, clothing, and temporary shelter, families take stock of their losses. Everything was destroyed. The roof of the house was ruined. It was full of holes because of the falling ashes. I couldn't plow the field because it was hard, because it was covered with mud and clay. In many cases, the reunion of surviving family members is bittersweet, as in the case of twin brothers Raquel and Raul Caringao, who manages to swim to safety after being thrown from a hand-powered boat escaping across Lake Ta'au. When they saw each other in Ta'au, they said that they were crying because they found out about the death of their parents. Majority of uh, people died in the eruptions of my relatives, especially the Karingal clan. The head of their family is also my advisor. He is the one uh, endorsed to my uncle, my relative also to pursue my studies. He passed away due to that uh, eruption. Uh, it seems that uh, I've lost also my parents. More than 300 islanders are killed by the 1965 eruption, which also opens a new crater on Volcano Island's southwest side. It is a very, very, at the very place then, before the eruption. Farming and fishing is very uh, effective in the place. So, due to the eruption, you know, the people there, they have to go to other place, to other uh, uh, municipality, to look for their living. Others, like Angelita Avellino and her family, return to their land the only life they know. But it will never be the same again. After that experience, I still am afraid. It took a long time for me to forget what happened. An investigation by scientists leads to the installation of permanent monitoring stations at five of the Philippines' most active volcanoes, including Mount Taal. Action plans are also formulated to provide a framework for effective communication and disaster management during an eruption. Today, Taal remains one of the most threatening volcanoes in the Philippines. But that doesn't stop people from populating the slopes of Volcano Island. In fact, there are 2,000 more people living on the island today than in 1965. Today, it wouldn't just be poor fishermen and farmers. It would be uh, people who, uh, from Manila, who built uh, uh, condominiums. And uh, in the last 15 years, they've built apartment houses on the slopes of, uh, of the volcano and uh, all kinds of things like that. People have, there's some resorts there, and people have beach houses and so forth. Frankly, I think it's pretty foolish to, uh, to be building up on uh, the edge of what is almost certainly a deadly volcano in the world. Well, we are uh, constantly monitoring the volcano so that uh, by the time the Al volcano uh, would show signs of unrest, uh, we will be able to gather some quality data that will tell to us uh, when the volcano will, would erupt and what type of eruption the volcano would uh, exhibit so that we will be able to issue uh, Warn, appropriate warnings. However, despite modern technology, many feel that any warning will come too late, just as it did in 1965. Ang masasabi ko lang doon sa mga nakatira doon, 
The only thing I could say for the people living close to the volcano is that we all know that this volcano is an active volcano and very dangerous. And at the moment you are not paying attention to it, you'll get caught up just like what happened to us back in 1965. Uh, we have to uh, make the people aware that uh, Taal Volcano Island is still very active and Taal Volcano Island is still capable of uh, exhibiting a very violent eruption. The experiences at that time of my life will remain with me when I lost my parents, my brothers and sisters, and my relatives because of that volcano. I never want to go back and remember those days because it is so saddening. I'm not going to live there. I could still visit that place, but I'm definitely not living there anymore. If you guys are preparing for the apocalypse or want to survive a disaster or just want to have a really awesome camping trip, check out the products we have in the links below. Just by shopping for these products, you help support Bad Day HQ. In fact, any shopping you do in Amazon while going through these links will actually help us produce more great content for you guys. 